Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is about the most important questions for Industrial Pharmacy 2, which is in your B Pharmacy 7th semester, final year. In the unit number 1, you have the first question, pilot plant scale up for solids, liquids and semi-solids. So from this, solids is the most important one. So whenever we plan to commercialize a product or bring about production at a market level, at a larger level. So we have to take some few baby steps to amplify and quantify our production batches. We need to take small, small batches and check whether there are any errors, defects or failures. And we determine the key process parameters so that at those processes we take the utmost care. Also, it helps us to decide the financial requirements and the financial actual cost required so that is what we call as a pilot plan firstly you perform research and development then you product then you go for production batches at pilot pilot level that is pilot batches then you go for scale up batches which are exhibit and pre exhibit batches and then finally you go for commercial batches but this process is not as simple as it looks for solids, definitely the first step that we require is the material handling. So material handling is very, very important. After material handling, getting and receiving the material and storing the material. Like as soon as we get the binders, diluents, API, we do not immediately start produce production. We store it. So a proper warehousing. Then proper sieving. granulation compression size reduction coating if any and enteric colon sugar etc drying and then finally storing storage so whenever we think of uh, producing these batches at a pilot level. So there are certain general considerations that we need to keep in mind in order to open this pilot plant. So the number one is the place, the location, the site. It should be clean, hygienic, away from industrial area at least and the surrounding atmosphere should not be too polluted. The second is the personnel, the people working there. They should be highly trained, qualified, they should have practical experience as well as the knowledge of the equipments. The third is the equipments. So equipment maintenance, equipment procurement, equipment purchasing is very, very essential. Fourth is the raw materials. The raw materials that we procure should be of standard quality. They should not be of inferior or substandard quality. The fifth is the methodology or the process. The process that you are uh, actually using, for example, over here, suppose if you are going for granulation. So there are different types of granulation, dry granulation, wet granulation, direct compression. So it depends upon what are the conditions required. And also certain key parameters. The sixth is the key parameters. That is, suppose if we are going for a tablet production. So in the tablets, the roller speed the pre-compression speed, the ejection disc, the size and dimensions of the cavity, the cam track and there are so many other certain parameters like if it's a drying, drying rate, drying temperature, spraying rate, spraying temperature, the nozzle of the spraying. These are few of the most important parameters that one cannot forget. The next for liquids, similarly, you have other key process parameters like the impeller, the size of the impeller, the baffles, the capacity of the uh, tank, the material of construction, it should be corrosion resistance. So certain things are to be kept in mind with respect to liquids. And the next question that we have is the SUPAC guidelines. So these are basically scale up and post approval changes guidelines. So there are three levels in level one, level two, level three, minor, major, 
and moderate. The next is the testing documentation and filing documentation. So in testing documentation, basically you have to provide information with respect to the dissolution studies, in vivo bioequivalent studies, stability data and the chemistry data. In the filing documentation, you have to give uh, information about CBE, changes by uh, affected, prior approval supplement, PAS and AR, that is the annual report. These are the three must needed documents with respect to filing documentation. And in SUPAC, there are changes with respect to batch size, with respect to the manufacturing equipment, with respect to manufacturing procedure, with respect to manufacturing site, with respect to excipients, like excipients, suppose if you are using AVI cell, which is microcrystalline cellulose, grade 101, and if you are using grade 102, so one is powder, one is granule, so the grade has changed significantly, The uh, there might be effect on the performance and quality as well as the efficacy. In the manufacturing procedure, basically there are different procedures that you can use, like from automatic to semi-automatic, or if you are changing the principle of the equipment, if you are changing the mechanism of action it's if it's shearing if you're uh, converting into crushing in the manufacturing side suppose if you are changing the side from one a uh, particular place to ad another adjacent block then it might be a manufacturing the next is the technology transfer in the technology transfer basically you have different other terms that you need to remember that is the cqa cma sending unit receiving unit then you have certain few different other important terms like gap analysis iq oq dq pq installation qualification operational qualification design qualification and performance qualification in gap analysis again you have different cry, uh, critical criticality change control that is cc cs there is the control system and also again in the sending and you have different documentations you have validation you have commissioning bracketing spiking bracketing means you bracket it within the two ranges the upper limit and the lower limit like the maximum assay and minimum moisture content so that is a limit Similarly, the minimum moisture, uh, minimum assay and the maximum moisture content. That is another bracketing limit. Spiking, you add a known amount of impurity. So, impurity profiling is also very, very important. Like in one of the uh, drugs, like atracurium bisalate, there are around 21 impurities. So, impurity profiling is also very, very important when we speak with respect to technology transfer. And there are different agencies of technology transfer like TIFAC, BCIL, SIDB, TIPC, NRDC. So, TIFAC is basically Technology Information Forecasting Assessment Council. BCIL is Biotech Consortium India Limited. NRDC is National Research Development Corporation. SICDB is Small Industrial Development Bank of India. Then you have APCTT and TIPC as well. APCTT is basically Asian Pacific Center for Technology Transfer. TVSE is Technology Bureau for Small Enterprises. These are basically providing you fundings, collaborations, scholarship programs they provide you a platform flagship programs they aid in different scientific research so these are the few agencies that are very very important with respect to the technology transfer the next you have is the quality risk management the qrm so it is basically according to ichq9 guidelines that is a very very important term that you need to remember ichq9 guidelines quality guidelines so in quality uh, risk management you have different terms like risk reduction risk control risk acceptance risk review risk events risk identification risk analysis risk evaluation risk assessment so these are few important risk uh, associated and also there are risk assessment tools like hecap FMEA, FMECA, which is failure mode effects and criticality analysis. Failure mode effects analysis 
hazard analysis and critical control points so these are few of the different critical uh, quality risk management tools also you have faulty tree guidelines ftg you have preliminary hazard analysis pha so these are very very important quality risk management tools that you need to remember next up you have is the unit 3 where you have ib so in investigation brochure is basically a document and you need to uh, give information to the investigator regarding entire the investigator's name address contact details there's a title purpose scope objective table of contents appendices abbreviations fundings study design the findings and the results of the study suppose if the study design can be either cohort crossover parallel or blind in blinded studies also it can be single blinded or double blinded so these are the few important parameters bioequivalent studies again you have different bioequivalents that is therapeutic bioequivalents chemical bioequivalents pharmaceutical bioequivalents and only bioequivalents so chemical is basically same labeled quantity pharmaceutical is same identity purity dose dosage form the route of administration the therapeutic bioequivalents is basically same amount of the drug in the body so plasma drug concentration is the same so the next we have is clinical research studies crs crp clinical research studies and clinical research protocols these are the protocols that are very very essential when we speak with respect to the clinical studies and the data submission to the uh, for the investigational new drug inda investigational new drug application for the approval of the clinical trials So the clinical trials are basically those that are divided into different phases, whereby you check the quality, safety, efficacy of a particular product, right from the preclinical phase up to the post-marketing surveillance phase, that is phase four. And in CRP, you need to again give information about the number of animals, the species, the sex of the animals, the subspecies, if any, the storage condition, the acclimatization, that is isolation. Uh, what were the conditions uh, what were the dose dosage form route so similarly you have to see uh, uh, each and every detail and you have to give mention about each and every detail of the crp and also if possible you can give the case study report forms case report forms that is crf and these are carried out with respect to oecd guidelines if there are toxicity studies so organization for economic cooperation and development gives a basic idea about the different guidelines that you need to carry out with respect to glp that is good laboratory practices and uh, different toxicity studies as well nda is basically new drug application so whenever you need go for a new drug the applicant or a sponsor or firstly files for nda so there are different tests like chemical statistical methodological pharmacological toxicological and when the further this stage is passed the next stage that comes is the stage for labeling inspection packaging inspection etc if there are any queries if there are any questions then it goes back to the sponsor and, and then he has to give the justification and the evidence for the same and if it gets approval then you can get an approval for the new drug application and then you can market or commercialize your product data presentation for fda so whenever we prepare a data we need to keep in mind that the data needs to be based on 4c clarity content consistency and concise these are the four c's there are different c's but similarly there are five m of pilot plan men material method money and machine these are the five m similarly there are four Ps as well: proper research, proper planning, proper documentation, and proper records. 
these are the four different P's. Proper planning, records, reports, documentation. So, proper research. These are few of the important concepts that you need to remember. Also, the data, it should be margin, justified, the font size, the font style, the different content of the FDA submission. These are very, very essential. And when you are preparing a dossier or a CTD, so the electronic comment technical document can be either in the form of a uh, uh, normal or it can be an electronic comment technical document according to M8 guidelines. The M4 guidelines, that is the multidisciplinary guidelines of the ICH is for CTD, while the ECTD is basically uh, M8 guidelines. The next you have is the GLP, good laboratory practices according to the FDA and according to the OECD. So good laboratory practices basically gives you an idea, instruction or protocol. What guidelines need to be followed, what are the basic instructions. So it is a collaborative, strategic, planned instructions and set of procedures. Always choose your words very wisely whenever writing the paper for the industrial pharmacy because the content is what that matters and the words that you use. Uh, NABL that is National Accreditation Board for uh, lab, uh, Testing and Calibration of Laboratories. So in that you have proficiency testing provider and marketing reference producer. Profic PTP and MRP, proficiency testing provider and marketing reference producer. So there are different accredited bodies. These are autonomous organization that gives a third party certification. So you get a proper validation from a third party that your laboratory is validated. Similarly, there is NABH as well for hospitals. NABH accreditation, National Accreditation Board for Hospitals. So that is also very, very important. The Six Sigma quality, uh, again, it is very, very essential because the Six Sigma helps in proper strategic goals, achievement and achievement of the quality. So it has a mnemonic of Dimedev and DIMAC. Design, measure, analyze, define, verify, improve and control. These are the few important qualities in the Six Sigma that one has to keep in mind. And nowadays it is our demand, proper research as well. So Demedev, Demac and our demand. These are the Six Sigma basically that you need to remember and with Six Sigma we can achieve 99.9992% of the quality. So we can get optimized product and the batches can be of defined and desired quality that we want. The next is the ISO that is International Organization for Standardization. There are two different parameters ISO 9000 and ISO 14000. 9000 is for quality management. 14,000 is for environment management. So the reports, the records, the audits, they will be respect to the environment. And there are different subtypes as level, like 14,001, 14,010, 14,020, 14,030. Similarly, 9,000, you have 9,001, 9,002, 9,003. TQM, that is the total quality management. Total quality management is basically very, very useful when we speak with respect to the quality assurance and quality control. So there is a different circle you can say. Total quality management which encompasses quality management system which further encompasses quality assurance which further encompasses GMP that further encompasses quality control and GLP. So this is a basically circle of different quality parameters. So for optimum quality, we need to maintain these and the major aim of the TQM is continuous improvement, customer satisfaction and management satisfaction. So these are the three most important aims or you can say objectives of the TQM, continuous improvement, customer satisfaction and management satisfaction. The next and the final unit that we have is the unit number 5 where you have CDSCO that is the main regulatory body of India. It approves and grants the certificate 
for the drugs commercialization not just drugs the medical devices the diagnostics everything will be encompassed with respect to the permission from cdsco and cdsco is under ministry of health moh that is the directorate of health services the cdsco appoints a dcgi this under dcgi further there is deputy dcgi assistant dcgi which is further divided into two types where you have technical associates and drug inspectors again you have drug inspectors and technical in, uh, associates but these are different for the medical devices and for the medications or the drugs and the pharmaceuticals so cdsu approval is extremely essential and the permission for commercialization or marketing of your product the next is the copp that is certificate of pharmaceutical product copp is basically required by the importing as well as the exporting country for efficient trade and export shares where there is unit dose the generic name brand name the information about the company address and contact details and everything is mentioned in the copp the mou that is memorandum of understanding so this is a basically mutual non binding or a binding document or a agreement between two parties with respect to confidentiality or with respect to a particular agenda the next is the out of specification ous these are those results that are not expected something that is out of the box so they are termed as out of specification results and the last is the approval process of a new drug whenever there's a new drug there's a long approval process like different form form number 21 form number 11 form number 12 form number 44 these are uh, forms that are required for test licensing for permit licensing so these are very very important forms when we speak with respect to the approval of a new drug so that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching it these are my few uh, contact details for any collaboration or for any doubts you can reach me through these platforms This is my Instagram page my YouTube channel and my slideshare account thank you so much for watching the video